Hi there, Scuffle Boy 6 Blades. Thanks for joining me with this uh, tutorial run along axe restoration. Uh, as you can see, it's quite beaten up, and the eye hasn't been cleared yet, so that's the first order of the day. The edge itself, as yet, is not sharp, so I'm not too worried about hanging on to it with my hands as I'm clearing it using uh, about a 10mm drill bit. Just take your time, drill three or four holes, and then the plan would be to take the, uh, the next size bit up, as you can see there's a different drill bit, just to take a few more pieces of wood out, but there's still a few bits wedged in there, so eventually I went to a workshop knife, tap tap, lever lever, go steady when you're levering the knife and don't sort of close it on your hand. I then realised it's getting to the point now where if I use the drift, I could use the um, the drift to knock material out. So here we go, let's find the drift. And then using the drill press stand holes, I was able to clear the eye. And obviously brass won't be quite so damaging to the inside of the eye. So there it is. It doesn't look too deformed. There's no cracks in it. Uh, I thought, oh, I'll use the drill press vice to hang on to it but the pole was just too mushroomed over and as soon as I put in any work into it it would rock so here I use the belt grinder to take the worst of the mushroom off and I use a coarse belt and not too much pressure again I'm hanging on to it but I'm not too worried about the edge because it's not sharp yet and then it drives into the drill vice a lot easier Use the pipe wrench and now I can finish off the eye inside and just take any burrs or chips out. Use the brass uh, drift to poke an oiled rag through because once that handle goes in you won't be able to put anything inside the eye to stop the metal from degrading so it's oiled through. Now I'm just removing the last bits of sort of mud and tarnish off the outside was WD and I actually finally get a look at the head of the the axe and you can see that's either where it was forged or where they've put a high carbon edge in so here's two ways um, in order to put a new edge on uh, initially you could set yourself up with a sort of false fence on your work rest clamp it you've angled the platen over and you just run it along a piece of hardwood, or in this case some HDPE, and you can do it that way. Or if you're like a boss, you can just do it free and you'll see me in a minute. Just set the same angle as if you're on a Tormek, and you're the blade guy. Uh, you've got to sort of swivel it backwards and forwards because the bit is thicker in the middle than it is on the edges. So you sort of swoop it backwards and forwards, but once you've got a feel for it, you can just approach a belt grinder and do things free and so that put a new edge on it not much just enough uh, now i'm using a uh, it's called a scotch bright wheel sort of like a nylon scour but on a coarse one and i'm just taking all the sharp edges off cleaning up the steel without losing that beautiful aged black patina too much that gives the, the head some character. So all this is is a, uh, a sort of stiff nylon scour. I've gone to the crimson one now, which is a medium, and just tidying up the underneath, into that, and just making sure that the the outside is finished, but without losing that lovely black patina too much. So once I've finished with that, you can see it like. Uh, you're getting an almost buffed finish and you're gently convexing the edge over and over to the the buffing wheel I'm now using a sizal mop so this is the next sort of stage up before you get to a, a stitched mop and I'm using a bit of a cut polished compound so the sort of first compound you would use and I'm just gradually gradually finessing that edge already it's cutting paper so now I go to a stitched cotton mop 
and some hyphen which is for stainless steel this is more of a finishing compound so two stages of finishing on a belt two stages of finishing on a buffing machine uh, now to put the masking tape on I used acetone to get rid of all the polish the handle uh, what you got to do now is get all the machining marks off from the manufacturer who's made the handle so yeah plenty of sanding I started at a 120 um, and now once that's done I'm going to cut the excess off of the new handle still leave about 10 mil sticking out the top so that is going to be cut off and if you're shrewd, you're giving yourself some stock to make wedges. I put those off cuts in the oven to make sure there's no more material. Offering up there, helve now into the eye. And I'm going to use a 4 inch contact wheel with coarse belt. This leaves a lovely radius shoulder for the eye to cram down onto. You'll see it develop as we move. So I'm offering it up constantly constantly just seeing how and where and how much to gradually craft that piece of wood to just fit up inside the eye a real skill now you can use a rasp you could use uh, a file with some coarse sandpaper wrapped round you could use a knife you could use the head of the head of the actual axe if you wanted to be really Saxony, but uh, gradually, gradually crafting that socket to fit inside the eye. Uh, a lovely sort of teardrop shape, and once it starts going in, then you get the friction marks. And you see those little black marks I put in with the pencil because you're jamming it in. And now, uh, once you put the Thing on the floor use some protective mat or something and you can drive it in with a piece of wood again what I'm looking for is the coarse finished sockety held at the end of the handle I want to see it get smoothed out inside the eye and those black marks as it's been driven inside the eye that's the contact points and then that is the area then, there and there, there and there, that's what I've got to remove again, and to go back to the, the belt binder. Just finishing off now, doing a bit of freehanding on that 4 inch wheel, gradually working into a lovely shape, and then just offering up to the panel saw, and now I'm cutting the slot for the wedge. I'm not going to go all the way down, about two thirds, three quarters of the way down through. I don't want the split to continue outside of the eye, if that makes sense. I want the, all of the wedge to be more than inside of the eye. And there it is. I want the split to be in line with the bit as it is, because sometimes it performs. Now, back to the oven, I took the wedges out and now I'm crafting the uh, the wedges into wedges from the those two bits of stock I had off the top of the, the handle. Uh, you could use uh, a longer piece of wood, craft the end, and then saw off the wedge rather than put your fingers anywhere near the, the belt grinders I'm doing here. Or if you want to be a bit safer, uh, a melamine board with some sandpaper on, just do it by hand on a bench top and just gradually craft that into a, the correct size wedge that you think is going to be giving enough drive and uh, basically opening up that cut and wedging the, uh, the piece of wood yeah, that be nice. and you offer it in and you've got the split that you've cut just right Tap it down on the floor uh, onto something protective, and you're happy with that. And it's in. Oh, nice! It's true. Bang, bang, bang. 
Thank you, neighbors. I love you. Drive it in. Okay. As you can see, I'm more than happy with the fit and the finish. It's virtually perfect. All that uh, machine work I did, driving it in, a little bit of uh, curling of the wood. The split's pretty damn right. It cuts pretty. I'm happy. Pretty down through the middle. Because sometimes, sometimes over the years, with the hitting on the on the head, they started to form. So you just want to sort of steer the new handle in, into sort of alignment, and it's it's pretty good. He's had, he's had a hell of a life this thing. So anyway, stand full of, of wedges. Now I've got to taper the wedge down a little bit more. Right. Now, when we first start off use a bit of wood but after a while you use so much of a, a hammer or a mallet that you won't split the wedge too much I couldn't find my mallet but uh, I'm pretty good at using a, a claw hammer so you don't split the, the wedge it's a good fit I drilled a hole through the handle at the bottom and just counterbore it so my buddy at work can put a yeah it does cut leather so we can put a string on it to hang it up, but there was no way my mate at work was getting a, a sharpened axe like that without an axe mask. Uh, axe mask or the axe sheath, there's different names for them. But uh, just offer up the head, draw a 10 mil board around, and then stitch it up with uh, a strap and a popper. And he, it does do so much for the axe. It's covered up, it's safe. And there's that beautiful mirror cutting edge. And it retained all the character of the, the forging black effect. Just removed a bit of the mushroom and uh, oh, yeah. There's the wedge. And nicely finished handle with some boiled linseed oil on it. Thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>